Jesus the only one who's called the Son of God in the Bible? The Bible calls Adam in the genealogy of Jesus. It says Adam, the Son of God. You've got David called the begotten Son of God in Psalms chapter 2, verse 7. All of these different people in the Bible called the sons of God. If he recognized Jesus to be the Son of God, that doesn't make him different from Adam or uh, David or any of the other prophets. How? Excellent. You say Jesus had no father, he had a mother, correct? The Quran says Adam had no mother or father. So the Quran says, if you want to say Jesus is God, you have to say Adam is God because he's better from the aspect. He has no father, he has no mother. And then how many gods do you have now? Welcome to the Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Remember that the Father State, you can support the Father State by going to the Father State dot TV slash donate. And we're also on locals.com. Locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. All right. I do appreciate it. I have with me Muhammad Ali. He's from the Muslim Lantern YouTube channel. Mohammed, thank you so much for coming on, man. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. I do appreciate it. Why did you become a Muslim? Yeah, so I was born uh, in a Muslim family, and I think a lot of people are born in specific religious families. And Muslims have a specific belief. We believe that there's something called the fitrah. Fitrah is an innate disposition to recognize the Creator who created everyone. So we believe every human being is born with that. We believe every child is born with that natural disposition called the fitrah, to recognize their creator. So we believe they're initially born to recognize God and to recognize parts of good and bad. So I believe this is how I was born, this is how you were born, and how everyone was born. But the Prophet said, when you grow older, your parents, they influence you. They, you can become a Christian, you can become Jew, you can become something else. But if you were left upon that natural disposition that we call the fitrah, You'll always be upon the position of Islam. You'll be upon a position of submission. Because the word Islam means to submit. A Muslim is someone who submits to the Creator, who submits his will to God. So you're naturally upon that position to submit to the one true Creator, the one true God. So I was born in a Muslim family. But well, up until I reach... Uh, yeah, you want to no, say something? Or should I continue? Yeah, yeah. so I, up until I reached the age of 18 or 19, obviously I think everyone gets this existential kind of question, right? For, why am I doing here? What's going to happen to me when I die? What's going to happen in the future? And I got the same question as everyone else. And I would say what triggered that question for me was thinking about death, that everything ends. My life ends because I was thinking about my future when I was 18, 19, around that age. I was thinking about my future. Okay, so what do I want to do in the future? What do you want to be? What do you want to become? What do you want to accomplish in life? And then when you think about it, that really whatever you accomplish, you're going to end up dying. However amount of money you're going to make, in the end, you're not going to take with you to your grave. Right. However amount of money you have, you're not going to wear more than one outfit, right? So this is what got me thinking into religion. And then I investigated, obviously, first Islam, looking at the evidences of Islam. I was born in a Muslim family. So I said, okay, let me see. Why is Islam the truth? Why are my family Muslims? Should I follow this faith? Because if I'm going to die, I want to die on the correct belief, Right. So I investigated first Islam and then I investigated different religions and I came to the absolute conclusion that it cannot be any other truth other than Islam. Amazing. And so you were born a Muslim, but Muslim is just a religion. It's just a name. It's just a word. It's not who you are. And okay. now that you're an adult, why have you stayed in it rather than because, you know, rather than looking at Christianity and realizing that Christianity is the best religion because it, it requires that you admit that you're wrong. And when you admit you're wrong, then you're born of God. So it's not who you are. It's just a religion. You're not, you're not a Muslim. It's just a religion that you belong to. Do you feel like you are a Muslim or do you feel that you belong to a religion called Muslim? Well, this is the thing about me. I don't go with feelings. I go with facts. So it's not about well, whether I, I feel I'm a Muslim. feel like, do you think that you are a Muslim or do you think you belong to a religion called Muslim? No, I, I know I'm a Muslim. And, and this is the thing I was saying. Uh, I was explaining what the word Muslim means. The word Islam in the Arabic language comes from the word Islam, which means submission. 
A Muslim is the one who does the act of submission, effectively a submitter. So I am a submitter to the creator. Everyone has to submit to the will of God, whether they like it or not. So I am effectively, every human being has to submit to God, right? Some people choose to disobey God by doing certain acts that go against his will. So I try my best to submit as much as I can. And that's what a Muslim is. So yes, I am a Muslim. And when I reach, as you said, the age of adulthood, I know that Islam is the way to be because everyone ultimately has to submit to the one true creator, has to submit to, to the creator of everything because he's the one who gave you life to begin with and you will return to him. You're not going to go anywhere. Now, when you say Christianity is true or realize that Christianity is true, I will beg to defer, you know? That's why I do. This is basically what I do with my child, right? My, Muslim, my, my child called the Muslim Lantern where I engage with different people, especially Christians, right? I've got tens of videos, if not hundreds of videos online engaging with different Christians, priests and otherwise. So if I uh, were to think Christianity was the truth, I would have followed Christianity. But I know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt, that Christianity is not the truth. Therefore, I cannot be a Christian. Amazing. Um, when you say you submit... Do you, you cause yourself to commit or does, how do you submit to this guy? Okay, so first we say that, that Allah is or the Allah? creator is not a, yes, Allah is the Arabic word for God. So Arabic Christians, for example, Arabic Christians, Arabic Christians in Syria or Egypt, they use the word Allah. Because Allah is the Arabic word for God, even though they're not Muslims, but they use the word because it's the Arabic word for, that we use for God. It, it is the, uh, the name of God, right? Allah. So we say, we worship Allah and we say Allah is not human because you use the term man, I think, or, or human. We don't believe Allah is a human. That's a, more of a Christian idea, a Christian concept. Not only Christianity, other religions as well. They, no, it's not, they kind it's of, not uh, a Christian idea that God is a human either. That's not the Christian okay, idea. The, are you Christian yourself? I am. But okay, God so is not you, a human. Do you, believe, do you believe Jesus is God? No. God is, is a spirit, and Jesus is the okay. son of the Father. And that's the Trinity. Who? The Trinity? Do you believe in the Trinity? Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? The no. The triune God? No. Oh, so you believe it? You're a Unitarian Christian? No. I don't so, even know okay. that is. <laughs> Okay, so when I talk about Christianity, uh, because I do not know your specific beliefs, when I talk about Christianity, I, I speak about the general public. And the general public, majority of Christians believe in the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm sure you're aware of what the Trinity is. I, and well, if you believe in the Trinity... There's no such thing as Trinity. I agree with you, but that's what Christians believe. Right. So uh, I think you would say that to the over 90% of Christians, right? Not me. I completely... The Quran, in fact, agrees with you. The Quran says, do not say three. All people of the scripture, all people, all Jews and Christians, do not uh, go extreme in your religions. Do not say that God is three. But yeah, God because there's one. God, there's his son, Jesus Christ, and there's his teacher, the Holy Spirit. They're all working okay. for the same purpose, but they're, they're themselves. So what is the difference between Jesus and you, other than the uh, miraculous conception? Why, or what? The immaculate conception or whatever. You say why, what? Other than the virgin birth. Other than the virgin birth, what makes different, uh, Jesus different from you or unique from you? Um, he was born of a virgin. He was born perfect. I wasn't. That's the only difference. Only difference. Okay. So we, the Quran kind of addresses this point. The Quran says the, the example of Jesus unto Allah is like that of Adam. Allah created Adam of nothing. He said, be and it is. And he had no mother and no father. So just because you are born without one of your parents or both of your parents does not really make you that unique. So if you look at, at, at Adam, peace be upon him, we believe Adam is a prophet. Adam had no mother or father. So if it's a competition of who has no parents, Adam wins that competition, right? And if actually, if you read the Bible, you'd find someone who had no father and mother as well. It was called Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter seven. If you read verse one and two and three, they talk about someone who is a contemporary to Abraham. He was called the high priest, in the, in, and it says he has no genealogy, no father, no mother, right. no beginning of time, no end of days. Right. And that person, then he's not. He, then Jesus is not unique because he has the same attributes there, right? Well, you, so what we would right. say is we believe Jesus. Yes. You're right in that because that's why we must be born of the father because once you're born of the father, then you have no mother anymore. Uh, and so Christians are, are born through the mother, and once they are born of the mother, they are then born of the father. There's a second birth, the spiritual birth of the father. But let me ask, uh, the, mm -hmm. do, do you love Christians? That's a very kind of vague question, right? To answer that question simply, I would say, 
Muslims love goodness. No, I'm asking we love do goodness. You love if someone Christian. does good, if someone does good, I love that person who does good. If someone does bad, I I don't love that person who does bad, right? Uh-huh. So if, if you generally ask me, do I love all Christians? I would answer no. Obviously, I don't love all Christians. I don't love the Crusades. Who went to uh, Muslim lands and they were. Uh, chopping heads, right? I don't love the Crusades, for example, right? So there are certain people I don't love. I don't love certain Muslims. I don't love extremist groups that go kills people and make our religion look bad. I don't love those people. So it, it's, it's, it, it doesn't matter what your religion is. What do you do? So I love the Muslims that do good because they are my brothers in the faith in Islam, as the Quran says. But when you ask me, do you love Christians? What kind of Christians are you referring to? Generally, do I love all Christians? No, I wouldn't say I love all Christians. You have to give me a reason to love you, right? So your, so your answer to the question about do you love Christians is what? Is no, I don't love everyone. I don't love all Christians. I love the people based on the actions that they take, but I treat them well. So Amazing. I would treat Christians good, as the Quran teaches me to do. But do you ask me, do I love all Christians? The answer to that is simply no. Does, do, do your, does your Allah, does he love all Christians? Allah loves the good people. Allah doesn't love the transgressors. Allah doesn't love the disbelievers. So, so does he does he love all Christians? But Christians are not Muslims. So if, if let me put it, this, but this is the thing, uh, Jesse, with all the respect, right? You are asking me to give a, a blanket statement, right? No, and I'm are you saying all Christians answer. are the same? No, no, but I'm, are you saying I'm all Christians are the same? I'm trying to get understanding, and I want to know, does your Allah love all? The Christians. Does Allah love all Christians generally? Is that the question? Well, the Christian, me, all Christian, yes. Yeah, okay. So the answer to that question is Allah loves the believers. If they don't believe in Allah, why would Allah love them? So Allah loves some of the Christians, but not all the Christians? But the Christians don't believe in Allah. Which Christians are you referring to? Those who believe in the Trinity, who associate partners with Allah. If you associate a partner with Allah, Allah doesn't love you. Does if does you worship Allah, other than Allah, Allah doesn't love you. Does Allah love the Jews? If you worship other than Allah, Allah doesn't love you, right? <laughs> it's a, it's a, I'm giving you a blank statement as an answer, right? So if you are a Jewish person who's not a Muslim, who don't believe in Allah, who don't worship Allah, this is the thing, right? A creator you don't believe in, then why are you waiting? Because you're kind of trying to in, introduce Christianity into Islam here, right? Christianity is, is what is trying to sell this idea of we love everyone. Give the other cheek, uh, cheek and all of that. But when we see in practice, you don't love everyone. Uh, the, the European countries that, that claim to be Christian that go colonize Muslim countries, we don't say you love everyone. The priests that I engage with, they don't love me, right? Even though they would confess and use the term, I love you. But when you look at their actions, they tell the most, right? So we love, when you give us a reason to love you, we would love you. If you don't have a reason to love you, we wouldn't love you. Regarding the creator, the creator loves you based on your actions. But when I don't understand, how you can him, your Allah love some but not all because God my God he loved all and he says to us that in order to be of him we have to love all and it doesn't mean you you agree with the bad things people do because you understand why they do it but you can't hate them because they do it so how is it that your Allah loves some people but not all people Okay, do you believe your God loves Hitler? Yes. So that's the difference between our God and yours. Allah well, does not love our the Our God is the real God. Your God is not the real one. If he doesn't love all people. We can people. talk about that, but this is, this is like my toy is better than your toy. Like, we have to talk about facts, right? If you just tell me that, like, that's not proving anything. The point is this, right? We say Allah, there is no unconditional love, right? And I would say even Christians, they give a fake perception of unconditional love. Do you know why they give a fake perception? Because if you don't believe in Jesus, you don't have salvation, according to the Bible, according to Paul. Salvation is only in the belief of the of Jesus Christ. So if you don't believe in Jesus, according to Paul, St. Paul, as he says in his letters in Galatians and otherwise, you do not get paradise. You do not get heaven. You do not get rewarded. So it's conditional. And the condition is to believe in Jesus. Similarly, Allah's love is conditional. And the condition is that you do righteousness. You try to be your best. Try to do as much as you can. No one is perfect. We're not asking you for perfection. But to do as much good as you can. To avoid as much evil as you can. And to believe in God. Not to associate partners with him. And then Allah will love you. So if you want Allah to love you, then follow the Prophet. And that's the verse in the Quran, by the way. Chapter 3 of the Quran. Verse 32. Uh, 32 you can read it. You can read it. It says... If you want Allah to love you, then follow the Prophet and Allah will love you. Follow the righteous deeds, do the actions, believe in the Creator, 
And through his mercy, he will admit you to paradise and he will love you. So Let it's conditional ask. of whether you actually do good or not. Let me ask. Ask. Okay. Um, is Allah the same God that the Christian God is? That's a great question. We would say Allah is the God of Jesus. Yes, the God of Abraham, the God of Noah, the God of all of the prophets and messengers. Oh, so Allah is the father of, of Jesus Christ? Yes, you use, you use the term father for him. We don't use the term father. We don't believe God becomes pregnant or gives birth. We don't believe Allah has a wife or father or grandfather or grandmother. We believe the creator is the creator and we are the creation. But you, well, whoever you call the father as Christians, is whom we call Allah. To put it very simply, for to bring the idea closer, basically. So, as a Muslim, do you love all the, the Christians and the Jews? Well, you already asked that question in the beginning of the talk, right? And I did answer that question, right? Do you love all the Jews? I said, I answered the question. I said that if someone is good and doing good, then I love him for doing the good. So you love I some of the Jews. Love someone, you, love, you love the I don't Jews love someone that are who doing did, good. I love the actions that they're doing. Do you if they're love doing good the actions, Jewish? then I believe their actions are good. But as individuals, if they disbelieve in the Creator, then I don't. I don't love someone who transgresses against God. I don't love someone who curses God. Uh, and you should read what the Bible says about loving the Jews. If you want to read Matthew, talking uh, how how Jesus talked about the Jews, called them vipers and snakes, and how Jesus talked about the Jews and why he why he said about that. If you want to start there, right? So the point is loving and not loving. It's, I think these are very like uh, basic fundamental ideas that are being pushed in the West now based uh, based on liberalism, right? What do you mean by love? You tell me now, you explain to me, what do you mean by I do, do I love the Jews? Yeah, I was going to if ask you explain you that, to me what you mean by it, and I will explain to you. I was Go going ahead. to ask, ask you that in a minute, but what I, I want to know, you said you love only the Jews that are doing good. <laughs> I said, okay, I said if someone does a good action, I love the good action that he did. So I believe that person is doing good and that person is helping the world, that person is contributing to the world. But there are things that he's doing bad as well, which I don't love. For example, disbelieving in God or cur uh, cursing the prophets of God or otherwise. So I, I don't, you were you're expecting me to give you a general answer, you, but I cannot give you. No, well, I can give is, you what the you Quran might not notice I'm black and slow, so I try to make it simple. <laughs> and so what I want to know... Uh, yes. Do you, as a Muslim, you love the Jews you say that are doing good, right? If a Jewish person is doing, is doing good, then look, there is an article of faith in Islam, okay? The article of faith in Islam is that you love the believers and you do not, do not, you do not love disbelief. So if someone is a disbeliever who disbelieves in a creator, who disobeys God and worships other than God, then I do not love that fact. I do not love the disbelief that he's a part. But I can love good actions that he does. So I can love you for being generous. right? I can love a Jewish person for being generous. I can love a Jewish person for taking care of his neighbors. right? I can love a Jewish person for trying to do good as much as he can, taking care of his children, introducing family values into the society. I can love him for these type of attributes, but I do not love the part where he disbelieves in God. And so... You love the Jewish people that are doing good, right? Give me a yes or no. I know you explained it already, but just so we can. Okay. Move. You love the yes, Jewish people. Yes, based on the that explanation that I gave. I'm sorry? Yes, based on the explanation that I gave. Yes, based on the explanation that I gave. With the nuance so, that I gave. Yes. How do you know what good is? What is good? Excellent. Excellent. So, this is something called the, the idea of morality. Where does morality come from? So, as Muslims, we believe that morality comes from God. God is the one who determines right and wrong. Right. God is the one who determines good, good and bad. That's what we believe as Muslims. So whatever Allah says is good is good, and whatever Allah says is bad is bad. Amazing. Um, what is love? When you say you love those that do good, what is love? This is why I asked you. You know, now you're telling me, are you using my question to, yeah. to, to, I guess, no, me, No, no, right? I'm not using so, your look, question. I'll explain. Let me I'm explain. not using okay, your I'll question. My, I'll, since I'm talking, I was going to ask you that. You just jumped ahead of me. No, okay, no problem. So no what issues, is no love? Issues, no, I just found it funny. It's okay. Okay, I'll answer. I'll answer from my perspective. Okay. Right? So what? Do, why do I mean? Uh, which is what I was explaining uh, a while ago, right? What I mean by love is being just towards those Jews, being just towards those, those Christians, even if it was against my mother or father. So if I know my father is in the wrong, I would be on the side of the person who did righteousness, right? That's what Islam teaches. Islam teaches that you have to be just and good to everyone. So I have to be righteous with them. I have to be good with them. I, uh, if they need help, I will help them. 
And I love the good attributes that they have of being generous, etc., and all of that. And I love uh, uh, the fact that they're able to stay on their religion. I'm not going to force my religion on them, right? So I wouldn't say I love that, of course, because they, they're upon this belief, but they are allowed to practice the religion. So at the time of the Prophet, there was Jews and Christians, and they were living in the society, and they were actually they had their own courts, and they had their own marriages, and they had their own systems, and they were living under a Muslim society. So we believe that you have the right to practice your your belief as a Jew or a Christian, you can live under a Muslim state. In fact, in Andalusia and Spain, the Jews were living under uh, Muslim uh, Spain and they were traveling all over the Ottoman Empire freely. In fact, the uh, Salahuddin, who was the, the leader of the Muslim Empire at the time, his physician was a Jew. It's called Maimonides. If you know Maimonides, it's called Second Moses. There's no Jewish to, Jew today who doesn't know who Maimonides is. He's one of the most prolific figures in, in Jewish tradition. He was the physician of uh, Salahuddin. So we have a, a huge history of being good to the to the Jews and living a, a good life with the Jews. Unlike, I would say, what the Crusades were doing, a, a, a lot of Christians were doing with the Jews, I think the history was not that good from that perspective. But the, the Christian, quote-unquote, Crusade was about protecting themselves from the Muslims, trying to kill them. No, I think that's historically inaccurate. In fact, no, the first... Uh, the uh, first uh, okay, uh, go ahead. You want to say something? That's true. Okay, look, you, you can claim something is true, but, the, but you have something like the Spanish Inquisition, which shows you those people went into the Muslim lands that they were killing the Muslims and their babies and their children over in, in their cities. That was not about protecting yourself, right? When, when maybe it was the first raid that they did by killing a group of Jews, that, that has nothing to do with Muslims, right? The Jews, in fact, escaped. They were running away from the Crusades and they came and they seek refuge in Morocco. I'm talking about history now. They went to Morocco. That's why they still live in Morocco today. The Jews that live in Morocco today and Yemen and all of these countries, they went, they were running away from the Crusades. So for you to say that the, the, the Crusades, this is historically inaccurate with all due respect, right? And history is not something no, that you can make I up, right? No, I disagree, who... but I don't want to tarry with that too long. I want to ask. No problem. Um, I yes. want to ask, um, do you love those Muslims who cut off people's heads and, and put them on the internet? Absolutely not. You Absolutely don't love not. them? And, and we don't we don't consider none of these actions to do with Islam because I just gave you a verse of the Quran or uh, maybe I didn't give it to you I'll give it to you again now. In chapter I know, but six I, of didn't the Quran, hear, verse I didn't hear your answer. Do you love those Muslims that cut off the people's no. heads? I, I said no. I said no. Do you love the Muslims that enslave the blacks? I don't know this interview about love is about love. It's okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do I love who again? Go Do you ahead, love yes. the Muslims that enslave the blacks? Which Muslims are you referring to? The I don't Arabs. love anyone who does if they did that. I don't believe. I don't love the action. No. Uh, do you love the Arabs? Who, who are you referring to? Who are you referring to? I'm you know, an Arab myself, so of course I love. Over in Africa and places <laughs> like that, in the Arab country, the Arabs enslaved the blacks. Do you know? Have you heard of them? And Jesus sold ship? them to to America and other places. Do you love those? Have you heard of the Atlantic slavery? Have you heard of the Atlantic slavery and Jesus' ship? Do you, do you know about history with when it comes to slavery with the whites and the Christians? And, and the black people, right? Because I'm, I'm North African, by the way, right? So, so to come to me with these ideas of like, it doesn't work with me with all the respect. I've, I was raised all my life around people from all different colors, right? But I, know that, is, is it was the Arabs. That, I know that it was the Arabs that went to Africa and they bought the blacks from the, from the blacks and they transferred the them. The Arabs around, had slaves. They put them on ships yeah, yeah. and they transferred them around That's the not world. True. Uh, do you love okay. those? To answer you, to do answer you love you, those Arabs? To answer you, Okay, to answer you, by the way, that's not true, because the fact is that Arabs had slaves of all kinds. They had Arab slaves, people who were Arabs, they had people who were black, they had people of all colors, right? White. Slavery on, you have white on an Arabic slaves level. Too. Sorry? You have white slaves too, there was right? not many. Th there was not that many whites in that region. But there so, were white uh, slaves. They were in right? the Roman Empire. They were under the Roman Empire. They were not, there was not many white people in that region, so that's why I didn't mention that. But the point is very simple, right? Slavery was not about race there. You're making it an issue of race, but it was not an issue of race. It was nothing to no, do with race. No, it was about money. It was slaves. Yeah, exactly. It was a part of the society and money, yeah. yeah. And it existed in Christian countries and Christian lands. And the Bible, it exists in the Bible. It teaches you what to do with your slave. If you beat him half, half dead and he dies the next day, there's no problem because he's your property. In Deuteronomy chapter 20 or 22. But in the Arab countries, it's So that's what the Bible teaches you about slavery. Exists. Sorry? In the Arab countries, slavery still exists. Where? That, that's completely oh, false, right? I'm that, sorry? that is that is like no, no 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 please please because I'm an Arab now and you made a claim about Arab countries. Oh, you're Arab? Slavery. 
Yes, I am. Yes. And, and when, so you're Muslim and you're Arab. What is the Arab? Arab is my race. Oh, Arab is my race. And Muslim so, is my is my belief, my my way of life. So why do you live in Canada instead of an Arab country? No, no, but sorry, you said something about human trafficking in Arab countries. Which, I, I, where, which country? By the way, if you look at the at the, at the UK, there's laws stipulated even today about trafficking in the UK because of the amount of trafficking that happens. Go to Thailand of all those. Uh, uh, white Caucasian people who go to uh, enjoy slave uh, women there. That's not a practice that Muslims do, right? So if you want to talk about slavery today, I would say you start with the country that you're living in. No, we don't have slaves. Well, we might have some now because we have so many foreigners You have human here. trafficking. It's not, it's not legalized, foreigners. but it's there. It's not, it's not the Americans who are doing the slave, uh, the slave trade thing here. It's the foreigners that are coming across the borders from Muslim countries and China and, okay. and okay. those places. Okay, if you say so, I disagree with you. No, I don't think that's true. the case, but if you say so. So let me ask. It's not true. Why do you live you in- You don't have any stats with all the respect. You didn't mention any facts, but go ahead. Why do you live in Canada rather than a Muslim country? I don't live in Canada. <laughs> you don't live in, live in Canada? Canada? I don't live in Canada. Are you in Canada right now? No, no, I'm not in Canada. No. You live in your country? I don't know. Where, where, where is this information from? No, when, I don't live in Canada. Why do we think you live in Canada? Canada. <laughs> huh? That was my mistake. Oh, okay. My producer said that was his mistake. So we apologize. Okay, no no what country you live in? No issues. I'm in London right now in the UK. L I'm not in Canada. London? Yes. You're still in a white man country. Wh why don't you live in your country? Uh... Let me answer that question. It's not a white man country according to the last census in the UK. Christians are less than 50% of the population here. It might well, have been at a certain know. point you of right, history. Maybe less it might have been. No, no, with all due respect, you, asked, you said it's a white, a white man country, so right. you've got to substantiate that. I've given you now statistics which disproves that claim, right? <laughs> but it's not, it may right. be less than 50% Christian now because the white man made a mistake by letting the Arabs go there Cross the borders or however they got there, and now the Arabs are taking over the white man's country. Uh, I think the Arabs are minority in this country here. There's not that many Arabs in this country. There might be different people, maybe Africans, uh, that maybe you have an issue with that you, you don't believe they're doing good, but that's your own belief, right? But there's a lot of different, different there's a very, it's a very diverse place here. I, I would say there's more Indians here than other races, I would say, because they helped build this country after the Second World War, after the, 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 the English killed and the people after colonizing their countries. The, uh, they, had, they needed people, they didn't have men, so they got Indians to build the country. Yeah, they so hired some Indians, Indians to do it, you Indian to do it. They paid them, it wasn't free. Oh yeah, but it's okay if it's Indian slavery, yeah? But if it's black slavery, it's not okay. That's fine, but, like, but if it's Indian slavery, it's okay, yeah? Um, okay. It, 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 I didn't say that, but I'm saying that the Indian, Indian were paid to help Bill, but they didn't just do it free. They, it, it wasn't like they didn't get paid for it. But I uh, well, uh, there were slaves. That were, there was many slaves. But go ahead. Yes. I gotta ask, um, uh -huh. <clears throat> what caused the Muslims to cut off people's heads? Well, those people who do that are not following the Islam or the Quran. So you have to speak to them. They probably have some psychological issues. They have different other reasons for the actions that they're doing. But if you read the Quran, I mentioned to you chapter 60, verse 8 of the Quran, which says that those who do not fight you because of religion, do not take you out of your home. You should be good and just towards them because Allah loves those who are, ju who are just. And the Quran says in chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 190, fight those who fight you. And do not transgress. Allah doesn't love those who transgress. So the Quran is explicit and clear. In fact, the Quran says if you kill an innocent soul in chapter 5, verse 32, it's as if you killed all of humanity. And if you save one innocent soul, it's as if you saved all of humanity. So whatever those people are doing, like for example, I mentioned a group, uh, and I don't know if you want me to mention the name or not because like YouTube doesn't like some of these names, but it starts with I, and then you have an S somewhere there, right? So without mentioning the name, right? So that group, because I don't want to get uh, uh, right. harm your video in any way, right? right? So that group, by the way, it killed more Muslims than non-Muslims, according to Western report uh, studies that tell you the number of their ca casualties. Most of their operations are happening in Muslim countries, right? So they are even target. If they were doing anything to do with Islam, they would they wouldn't be targeting the Muslims and killing them more than killing anyone else. Uh, I, I want to go back to why do you live in a white country rather than your own country? You live in it's London. Not a white country. Why do you live in it's a not, white country? A, I'm sorry. It's not a white country, but I'm. 
it's not a white country, but I'm staying here for work reasons at the moment, or, or not only just work reasons, but I'm, all, I'm also here because I want to tell people about Islam. And if I stay in a Muslim country, they're already Muslim. So there's no point of me telling them about Islam, right? So I have to be in a place where people are not Muslim, right? So if I'm in the UK, there is a, a lot of people who are from different religions, different faiths, where I can have a dialogue because this is what I do, right? Interfaith, religious discourse and all of that. So I engage with different people. So here there's a diversity of people, Jewish, Hindu, Christian, and all of that. And I engage with them. And I would not be able to do that in, in, in a Muslim country. Therefore, I'm here for that reason. And so, so could, in, in could not just Christian, some Muslim countries, perhaps you can. Yeah. Could right. a Christian move to a Muslim country and freely and openly convert the people from Islam to Muslim? I mean, to Christian. Well, it, it depends. It depends. It depends on the country, but ideally, under Islamic law, no, you're not allowed to because Christianity is false, why Islam is the truth. And so, so just because you are guys are liberal, wait, wait, I'll answer you. Just because you guys are liberals, following liberalism, and you believe that anyone can do whatever they want to do, that does not mean that we're also liberal, all right? We don't allow harmful ide ideologies for our children. We don't allow rainbow flags in our countries. We don't allow these harm harmful ideologies to infiltrate into our people. So we are very. Uh, self-aware of what is the truth and we try to follow the truth and we don't allow falsehood to be uh, broadcasted. But 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 if a Christian goes and speaks with Muslims about Christianity, no one will do anything to him. For example, I'll give you an example, right? In Egypt, there's 50 million Coptic Christians who live there. The 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 president, current president is called Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. He built them the biggest cathedral in the Middle East. Right. So this idea of that they're, they're being persecuted is just people who have no idea of what's going on, right? So he built them the biggest cathedral in the Middle East. They speak about the religion. In fact, there was a woman that accepted uh, Islam recently. It was in the news. And then the, the, the church took her by force and brought her back to Christianity, converted her by force into Christianity. So, and this is in what you call a Muslim country, right? So uh, the answer to your question, as I said, depends on the country. Ideally, in an Islamic state, no, because Christianity is false and Islam is the truth. But I happen to know that the Christians are under, because I know some uh, uh, Christians over there, and they are under serious attack by Muslims in those countries over there. So, uh, have you heard of the fallacy of my friend said so therefore it's true? What? Have you heard of a fallacy called my friend said so therefore it's true? What you just told me is, is a personal experience of unknown anonymous individuals, right? I cannot validate or invalidate that. I can just say, okay, I've got some Muslims. By the way, Muslims are being persecuted and not Muslim lands. That's a fact, right? For example, here in this country, they say love is love, isn't it? And they allow you to do all of this uh, rainbow stuff because love is love. But, but they say to you as a Muslim, love. you cannot marry more than... Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. But then they say you cannot marry more than one wife. So if love is love, why are you stopping a Muslim by a lot to marry more than one wife? <laughs> so let me ask... So, you, so want, be, we are being... That's an we are being persecuted question. here, right? I want to get to that. But let me ask this really fast and a uh, fast no answer. So you, Muslims do not allow Christians to go over there and convert other Muslims to Christianity. And but the Vatican well, doesn't allow how it would to. you feel if they told you in London, you know what, you got to go away, you can no longer try to convert Christians to Muslim. Would they be right for that or would they be wrong to do that? It would be the right. It would be right, okay. Absolutely, it would be the right. It's, it's their country. Um, it's your country, it's your laws, right? So what now? I'm saying it's your country, it's your laws. Right. So you can determine what to do in your country. Yeah. And it's so just like I'm here, I'm legally not able to, just like I'm legally not able to marry more than one wife here. And I'm following that because that's the law in the country, right? Even though I don't agree with it. So they can do certain things that I don't agree with, but I'll follow it because it's the law. And so the law of the Muslims that you can have more than one wife? Yeah, the law of the Muslims and Christians and Jews, yes. But what's the purpose the of Bible. having more than one wife? The purpose of having, of course, having more progeny, having more children in, in populating the society. Also, uh, the fact that men desire variety while women are not the same. <laughs> They're happy with one individual, one person. So there are many reasons you can you can put. But generally, oh, Allah, 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 Allah Azza allowed it. Sorry? Is it true? What you say? <laughs> well, can a Muslim woman have more than one husband? No, because men and women are not the same. They're not equal. They're not the same. Amazing. So they don't desire the same things. What would happen to a woman, a Muslim woman, if she did get more than one husband? She like forget about Nothing. that law. If the man can do it, I can do it too. What would happen to her if she married more than one man? She, 
Yeah, she's committing a sin. Number one, number two, Islamically, it's not considered a, a, a contract of marriage, so it's not it's not in, uh, considered marriage to begin with. Thirdly, it will never work because men don't share that way. Uh, except the, the certain men in your European countries who are like a different type of men, right? But our, our, the, the real men, they would not allow, they would not allow that. So because the nature of a man and woman is different, a woman would accept that, and they do accept that, and it's a it's a fact. It's been the, the same for, uh, throughout human history, like Solomon, like David, like Moses, like Abraham. All of them had multiple wives, right? So it was a fact in human history that men had more than one wife, but it was never a fact that women had more than one husband. For many reasons as well, in the uh, back then, because you, you do not know who the child is, if the, more than one individual is having intercourse with the with the woman. And so, what would happen to the woman, Muslim woman, if she did get more than one man, one husband? I answered you. I answered you. I said it is this. What she's doing is considered a sin, number one. And it number was, two, it's not considered a marriage in an Islamic society. But, but what she, do you mean? What happened? I'm it's not like would she get punished? Would she punished by who? Punished by who? The head that specific of, act. That action that you, you 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 said it does not have any specific punishment in the Quran. Or the, oh, so if a woman got more than one specifi- man, specified. If a woman got more than one husband, she would not be punished. There's no specified punishment in the Quran or Hadith about that. So she wouldn't be punished in the afterlife, of course. But not in the in the now life. Not now, not in now in a now life. No, for so, that specific action, there is no specified punishment. Um, amazing. So how come the Muslims believe that when they go to heaven, they're going to have seven virgins? We don't believe that. You Where don't is believe that? that? Hadith? No, <laughs> no. We believe it. No, we believe we have whatever you like in heaven, but no. not seven. Well, there's not, nothing about seven virgins. If you have, if you want a million, you can have a million. If you want ten billion, you can have ten billion. This is the point of heaven, right? So heaven we, is a place where you have what, what your heart desires, right? Wow, so you believe that once you go to heaven, you can have as many as you want? Anything that you want. Whatever you ask for, the Creator will give to you, whatever you, your heart desires. So in heaven, why would you want so many? When I'm heaven, I'll let you know. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not in heaven right now, right? So when you get to heaven, because heaven is a place of pleasure, right? So if the more pleasure, the better. Of course, there's no problem in that. It's a reward. It's a place where, where a person can have what his, where his heart desires. That's the whole, the whole point of the concept of heaven, right? But it doesn't mean you can have material things in heaven. You can have heaven on earth, and you, he will provide all your material life because you need material things to live on earth. But in heaven, you don't need material things. You have everything. Well, the answer to that question that what you're saying right now is a, is a Christian concept, right? And which is allowing you to do whatever you want in, the, in, in, in today's life. Therefore, it does not matter what happens in the afterlife. But as Muslims, the creator, we don't use it. What you mean by material even, right? If you mean physical, uh, if that's what you mean specifically like, by material, like why is it inherently or, bad? Or material. Yeah, why is it inherent? In Can heaven. You, uh, what? How do you know you don't need it in heaven? There are I need it. There are other men who need it. So why are you deciding on our behalf? You know, you think <laughs> you need if a, I need it in heaven, it's my. You yes. believe that you would need physical things in heaven? Physical what? Sorry, I'm sorry. Peace. Do I, you, I I didn't hear what you said. Can you, you repeat again? Do you believe that if you went to heaven, you would need a wife, you would need a car, you would need money, you would need all those things? Need is the wrong word. A want. These yeah. things are, yeah. So these things are pleasures, right? So you get them because they're, 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 heaven is a place of reward and pleasure. Who told so you, you get that? get what your heart desires, what you want. Who told you that? This is, the, this is what, the, what Islam teaches. And therefore, if I'm a Muslim and I believe objectively that right and wrong comes from God, then based on that, it comes from the Quran, it comes from the Hadith, it comes from the Islamic teachings. That's Who told you that you don't need materialistic things? Not Who told you you don't you know. need materialistic things? You need to be on earth, but not in heaven. But let me ask. No, no, but who, to, who told you that? <laughs> who told you that? I can see that for myself. No one told me. Okay, I can. Yeah, okay, I can say I can see it for myself as well. But, oh, okay, you, good. You just, <laughs> good uh-uh. yeah. but let me ask. In the Quran, mm-hmm. it says that you can lie and deceive the infidel, which they call the Christians and the Jews, that you can lie and deceive them. You can pretend to be their friends. You can move into the country, quote, not quite like that, but whatever it takes to deceive them 
in order to destroy them. What do you think about that? Uh, I think about what what uh, what you just said is the lie. This is what I would say. And I would challenge anyone to open the Quran or Islamic teachings where it tells us to lie. But what I would advise people to do is to open the Bible and see what Paul says, that he becomes a Jew for the Jewish person, he becomes a Christian for a Christian, he becomes an atheist for the atheist to bring them into his faith. He says, if, if my if my lie leads people to righteousness, then why do you call me a sinner? So if, you, if you've got an issue with lying to support belief, then you should have an issue with Paul. But Islam doesn't have that, that belief. And I, I, I welcome that you can, uh, right now, if you want to show me, where does the Quran did or the Hadith it, tell you to lie take to, it out? to further your faith? It was in there. Did they take it out when we start complaining about it? The Quran has been the same. We have uh, carbonated manuscripts since the because time of the Prophet. It was until in today. there so You sure. can find it in the manuscripts. By the way, even in Birmingham, they have a carbonated manuscript there, right? So you can try and find it there, right? Because that's not necessarily a Muslim country. So if it's there, please show it to me. Do Muslims still co uh, consider Christians and Jews as infidels? What do you mean by infidels? It's an English word, so it's not uh, Arabic word. What do you mean by infidel? Uh, infidel meaning that they're non-Muslim and they are worthy of death. No, we don't. We don't believe that we, we kill any non-Muslims. And I quoted verses of the Quran for you. Chapter 2, verse 190. Chapter 2, verse 194. Chapter 60, uh, chapter, uh, 60 verse 8. Chapter 5, verse 32. All of these are given references of verses for people to see, to, to see that this is not the case. But how do I know you're telling the truth now since I know you that... The Quran. Muslim are taught to lie. You have to establish to me where Muslims are taught to lie. Can you please do that? With the, I just told you about uh, in where, order which, to... Where's the reference? In order to deceive, to befriend the Christians and Jews, in order to destroy them. Where is the reference? Where is that in the Quran? Where? I don't know. They may have taken it out now. It was there years ago. You, you made it up. With, but, with all the no, respect, I didn't make it up. This is I've seen it in there before. Oh, okay. But I did not make Where? it up. But Can you show me? Have, some, have one of your little Muslim friends show you. I don't know. No, no, I know, I know the Quran. All of it from beginning to end. And there's not, if you claiming is, when I say you made it up, I'm, I'm saying that based on me knowing the Quran. Because there's no such thing in the Quran. So if you make the claim, I believe you have to substantiate it with evidence, isn't it? No. That's how the, <laughs> oh, okay. So you just make claims. Okay. No, I'm not making, <laughs> okay. I'm just telling you what was in there. It may not be in there now. But let me ask. Oh, no, you it's support, never been there. Do okay. you agree with the Sharia law? Yes, absolutely. 100%. From beginning so to end. the Sharia law is to kill people, right? Punish them and no. kill them. If they don't no, do what the Muslims right want them to. No. I give references from the Quran uh, for you to answer this point that this is not what Islam teaches. You've got a, a, a more of a brainwashed extremist idea of what Islam is that has been taught in the media. But I did expect you as a person to be more well kind of acquainted that what the media says is not the truth. So when, so whatever kind of view that a lot of Americans have today of Muslims is absolutely not true. And I would recommend people to pick up a, a copy of the Quran and read what the Quran actually says. Instead of listening to what the media says or what is commonly uh, told about Muslims, actually, if you have a Muslim friend, you can look at their life, how they live their life, or you open the Quran yourself and read. That's the best because that's the source. What um, are women forced to wear those uh, those things over their head? What do they call it? Buckers? Burkers. Burker. Are they forced to wear that? Okay. The answer that, to that question, I feel it's a bit disrespect. This can be disrespect, disrespectful for two reasons, right? Why can it be disrespectful? For two reasons. First, is it has one of two assumptions. The first assumption is is that the women are stupid and they cannot make their own choices and wear it out of their own free will. Or number two, that all Muslim men are a bunch of barbarics who will force their women to wear things <laughs> that they don't have to wear. And either, and either way, either, either option you take, it is an offensive question, which is not true. So we believe they wear it with their own free will and choice. That's what we believe. Um, so I saw uh, uh, a documentary. I don't remember where, but there was a Muslim woman over your country, and she was walking around by herself. She didn't have a man with her. And the Muslim okay. men saw that, and they beat her up. Which country? In your country. Where's my country? Well, it used to be over, over there. <laughs> I don't know. Where is my country? But okay. is that <laughs> <laughs> okay? Let's, 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 okay, let's, obviously. <laughs> over there. Is, okay, can we get, 
I was I was expecting more of like rational questions than more than these kind of like I heard this and I saw this or right. Let me well, ask more you. of a rational intellectual so let me discourse. Let me ask you, I was honestly ra- expecting that, but I don't know. Let okay, me ask right. a rational question. Over in oh, Allah land, the Muslim countries, are women allowed to walk around by themselves at night or any time during the day? Yes. So they can walk around without a man at night as well. Yes. Oh, okay. I have, by the way, I have, I have sisters, and they walk at night without a man there. Yes. Oh, okay. They're allowed to do that. All right. Um, do you follow the Sharia law in London, or do you follow the London law? I follow the Sharia law wherever I go because a lot of people don't understand what the Sharia means. Sharia just means following the practice of Islam, the teachings of Islam. So praying five times a day is Sharia. Being good to my neighbor is Sharia. Uh, taking care of my children is Sharia. So I practice Sharia wherever I am because Sharia just means pathway to God. So whatever leads me to God, I do it wherever I am. Even if I'm in prison, I still can practice Sharia. I'm in prison, right? It doesn't matter where you are, right? And, and do you follow the law, the law of London as well, the, the land there? Of course, I'm here. Of course, oh, okay. I'm here. The Quran says, fulfill your contracts. And I've made a contract with this country that will abide by the laws when I enter through the passport. So I have to fulfill the contract. Would you die for your faith? Would I die for my faith? Yes. 100%, yeah. Any day. And, and what does that mean to you would die for your faith? What would you do? You ask the questions. You tell me. If someone went against your religion, if someone t- wholeheartedly disagreed with it, and they, they said no, that, bad things, let's say they said bad things about your religion, would you try to hurt them? No, if someone, no, if someone disagrees with me, and this is not dying for my religion, no. Uh, dying for my religion, I'll explain to you what dying for my religion then means from my perspective. Okay. Dying for my religion means in, in, in war, in combat, where they have a male combatant against another male combatant, Muslim against another faith, then yes, I would die for my faith in that kind of environment, which is what Islam teaches. Do the black Or, for example, or, 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 because I engage with, engage with the different people on the streets as well, right? So if someone were to kind of try to do something to me, I, I, if I will protect my faith right. or die in that time, yes, this is that me dying for my faith. My faith. There's no problem. Amazing. Do the blacks and the Muslims get along in London? Uh, many, many, uh, the, I, would say I don't even know the, the exact stat, but when you say blacks and Muslims, you're creating a separation. Only the 20% of Muslims are Arabs. There's 2 billion Muslims in the world. Only 20% are Arabs. 80% of Muslims are not Arabs. So oh, you have so, like, I don't know, the population of black Muslims that are out there. So why are you creating the separation anyways? I'm just wondering because the blacks don't get along with anybody else. I just wonder. There's, there's full uh, 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 African countries that are, uh, like Somalia, for example, which is 99% uh, Muslims. They're all black. I'm sorry to hear that. No wonder. What a mess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Okay, so far, uh, no problem. It's a low blow, but I'll let you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do, yes. you, do you love white people? Do I love white people? I love the people who do good. If they do good, then I love their goodness. If they do bad, I don't love their goodness. Do you do I bad sometimes? Them. Of course. I'm a human being. And, and as a result of doing bad, it's okay for people not to love you? Yes, if I do bad to someone, it's okay for him not to love me. That's amazing. But if I go around, be, yeah. Okay. Do, um, do the Muslim beat, is it okay for a Muslim husband to beat his wife? What do you mean by beat? Beat? Do you mean by, by beat? Do you mean by beat what, what the UN uh, uh, says that uh, women uh, in the Western America are abused everywhere, every day? That's the biggest study that the UN conducted, that saying that the women in the West are abused every day, everywhere. That that seventy percent of them at least have experienced being forced to watch porno, pornographic imagery. Is that what you mean by beat? So I, I would say if you have an issue with that, I really, I really, I really believe if you have if you, an issue with that because you have like a big audience, right? I really believe you start, You need to sh- start preaching to your people, right? The people who live in your country, people who live in the, in the West, the people who live in the U.S., you need to start preaching to them to, to not when they watch a football game like, uh, like ignorant people and they get upset, they go start beating their wife, right? So you need to teach them 
that this is not the right thing to do. So when, what do you mean by beat when you're asking? So, do we beat I mean, our women until there is cars, until there is cars on their bodies and their bones are breaking or any of that? No, Islam doesn't allow Let me ask do us this way. Is it okay for a Muslim husband to whoop his wife or punish his wife? Whoop? Whoop no, or it's punish, not, it's not about punish her? No, no, no. Punish in, what, in which way? Of course, every in, husband punishes his wife. Are you right? is, it, is it okay <laughs> for a Muslim to punish his wife in any form of fashion at all? Yes, uh, every husband and wife, they discipline one another. Uh, the husband, if he's the leader in that relationship, he disciplines his wife. And how does he discipline wrong. her? It depends on what she did. Advising her, telling her what you did is wrong. But Maybe it, he can get angry, he could raise his voice. But it's never okay for him to hit her in any way at all? Let me answer you in this way. The wife of Prophet Muhammad, she said the Prophet never hit a woman. And the Prophet had wives. And he is the example for us to follow. Therefore, we follow his example. So are you saying that it's never okay for a Muslim man to hit his wife at all for any reason? There is a level of permissible physical contact. For example, I can press your arm or I can press. These type of things are allowed in Islam. I can press my wife's arm, for example, but that is a last resort. Allah explicitly tells us in the Quran, you cannot go into this resort straight away. First, you have to advise the wife. And then there is a second step that you do, which is separation from your wife in bed. And then the last step is that, which uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, you cannot hit uh, the, the face. You cannot hit, break a bone. You cannot leave a mark. You cannot beat. This type of beating that happens in Western countries is not permissible in Islam. So you're saying that it's okay for the Muslim man, the married man, to press the arm of his wife, but he can't slap her or, or, no, or no, hit no. her in any yeah, yeah. other way at all. No, no, no. Slapping, uh, this is impermissible in Islam. But he Explicit. can only take her by the wrist and squeeze the wrist. He can squeeze her arm. A basic discipline that happens between husband and wife. I don't know. Are you married, you sure? How you know, hard, if there's a basic discipline. How, when he squeezes the wrist, leave a mark. how long, how long leave a mark. can he squeeze the wrist? Yeah, I told you that the conditions. You cannot leave a mark. You cannot cause severe pain. You cannot, you cannot break a bone. That's all impermissible. What would happen if you left a mark? then you are a sinner and you're disobeying the, the command of the prophet and you will get punished for that in the afterlife if you don't repent for it. So the prophet will punish the husband if he left a mark? The prophet doesn't punish. Allah is the one who punishes. We don't believe God is a man. Oh, okay. So Allah will punish the husband if he left a mark on the wife? If the husband excessively, of course, abuses his wife in that way, then on, on the day of judgment, yes, he will be accountable and be punished. Uh, and what would be the punishment? Absolutely, 100%. There's no, when you say, this is the thing, sometimes in the Quran and the Sunnah, some people think, perhaps maybe people who are not Muslim, and I understand, maybe they're not that familiar with the Islamic teachings, but not every action that a person does, there's a prescribed punishment in the Quran. You asked me before about a woman marrying two, right? There's not every action in Islam or in the Quran uh, is, there's a specific prescribed punishment. So Allah says he will punish because that's a sin in the afterlife. But what is the exact prescribed punishment? That We leave that to Allah. I do not know the oh, exact okay. punishment. Um, do you believe that men should play in women's sports? Men should play in women's sports. Uh, are you referring to the transformer uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. transformer phenomena in the West? Right. No, we don't. We don't agree with that. No, we don't agree with that. As so you Absolutely. do not. You do not believe that women, men and women should not mix in sports. Absolutely. And so, do you believe that women should play in men's sports? What do you mean? Can a woman play football, for example, run a little with a little ball? There's no problem. Do you believe that women should play in men's sports? But as you said, for example, football, what do you mean? What are you referring to? Which sport? What do you mean by men's sport? I asked you if you believe that should women play, men play in women's sport. You said no, right? No, you play didn't together. ask me to explain sport separate. with that. What the? I'm asking no, you. No, I said separately. I don't think you heard what I said. I said they can play separately, meaning not together playing with one another, a male team versus a female team, right? right. I said they play separately. That was the first question that you asked. Now, the second question that you're saying now is can men play female sports? I give you an example. I said, no, you football, should for women example. play in men's football? sport? Yeah, sorry. Women play in men's sports. I said to you, for example, football. I said there's no problem if a woman is playing with a ball or something. I answered that, yeah. 
Is the audio okay on your side? Because I, so I did say that. So why is it okay that. for <laughs> women to play in football with men, but men can't play in women's sports? Which women's sport uh, are you referring to? I th- okay. In Islam, if a woman is going to imitate a man or a man is going to imitate a woman, that's not permissible. That's why I give the example of football because there is no imitation there. It's just playing with a pa- basketball. But so, it, Oh, sorry, with, with the ball, right? If there is imitation... If a man imitates a woman or a woman imitates a man, that is a major sin in Islam. It's not permissible. So don't allow these type of things in our communities. So you're saying it's okay for men to play in women's sport as long as they're playing football? <laughs> no, I was saying a woman. I say a woman. <laughs> okay, I say women. Can, if you consider football a male sport, a woman can play with her other women, football, there's no problem. They can run with a little ball and have a goal and play. There's no problem. But not with men. Because I don't believe that sport is a masculine sport. It's a man's sport. That's why I asked you. It depends no, you, if it, you, if you, it has. I've told yeah. you I'm black and slow and you're confusing me. Um, give me a yes or no without all the other stuff. Should okay, men right. be allowed to play in women's sport, period? I can't give you a yes or no on that. Sure. Because I don't know, know what you mean by women's sport. Let me, ask, the... let me answer it this way. Do you, mean, do you mean can a man play ballet? If he's going to act femininely, it's not permissible. That's not what I ask. I ask, okay. should, women, should men be allowed to play in women's sport? Yes or no? I'm not going to give you a yes or no. What's your name? Yes or no? And, Where and, do you live? Yes or no? And sure. Not every question is a yes or no, right? You and have sure. to explain what you mean by the terms you're using and in order sure. for me to give you an appropriate answer. And you sure cannot clip have... me saying something, uh, with all the respect, because I can see from this interview, you cannot just clip me giving you an answer that maybe satisfies uh, a, a point of view that you want to push, right? You have to be very, I'm a very specific person, and you'll see that in my discussions. You have to explain what you mean with your words in order for me to give you an answer to your words. Okay, I don't, let me make it, uh, let I don't me think the world it. is black and white. Let me explain it. Mm. Should a male right. be allowed uh-huh. To play in a mm-hmm. female sport. Like? Like? Like any, what sport? Any at all. If that sport has feminine behavior, no. Should a woman be allowed to play it? Should women be allowed to play in any men's sports? If it has masculine behavior, will she act like a man? No, it's not permissible. That doesn't even make sense. But okay. I said that from the beginning. Okay, <laughs> I'm yes. I totally understand. It's a, um, no problem. Are, are you, um, oh, I got to ask this. Two quick things that I got to put you on the hot seat. Um, no problem. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Should a woman ever be allowed to lead a man? To leech. Lead. To what? Be the head of a lead man. Lead a man. No, the leader in the relationship is the man. Uh, that's explicit in the Quran, chapter 4, where Allah says, The men are maintainers, sustainer, protector, and leaders in charge of women. Yeah. Um, do women have love? Of course. And where did they get it from? It's God given. Everyone is, has love from God. God is the one who gave love to everyone. Amazing. It's an attribute so, that is God given. So, do you tend to be conservative or liberal? Neither. No, okay. I don't align myself with political positions. I'm Muslims. Whatever aligns with Islam is I'm with it. Do Whatever you, against it, I'm do against. Do you vote over there? I don't vote, no. You don't vote in London? I don't vote. Uh, and why not? Period. In London or outside London. I don't get into I, I don't get into rigged things that they make the population think they're making a choice when they're not making a choice. Oh, put okay. it simply. And and one quick <laughs> thing we ran out of time here, I know. I saw a video where you were really pushing some guy to become a Muslim. You were like, and he was asking these questions, he really wanted, he finally said it. And you said, okay, I must keep up with you. I'll take your cell number, you take my number. We're gonna really Do you have the title of the video? Why was that so important to make him be a Muslim? I disagree with you. Do you have the title of that video where you're, you're claiming I'm pushing someone? I, because I don't push anyone. And I would say, I say to everyone on the street that this is your choice. If you want to make that choice, you can make it. If you don't want to make it, you don't make it. Because the, the Quran says explicitly, chapter 2, verse 256, there's no compulsion in religion. But why no is compulsion it so... in acceptance. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, I was just saying the Quran says there is no compulsion acceptance of religion. You cannot force someone to accept Islam or any religion. So why I, I speak to the people, if I see, I believe Islam is good, so of course I will tell that person, I will warn that person, I want good for them. So if they accept Islam, it will be good for them and their afterlife. So of course I will speak to them about Islam. I will tell them Islam in a, in a good way by telling them the teachings of Islam. But I cannot force anyone, and I do not force anyone, because well, faith is in the heart, and you cannot force anything in someone's heart. But what's the purpose of being on the street teaching Islam? Uh, harmony in society. There's a lot of people asking the questions that you ask, which are media questions. And I, I commend you for asking these questions, because I believe these questions are, a lot of people are shy or afraid to ask these questions, right? They, they have a fear of Muslims. And they think something will happen to them if they go to a Muslim and ask them the questions that you're asking. So I appreciate, by the way, you asking these questions and being direct with them. So what we try to do is create as much harmony in society as possible and tell people about the message of Islam because we believe everyone should worship the creator, the one true God worthy of worship. And, she, and this is the only thing that is going to give them happiness. Uh, and, and anything else will not give them, is not going to give them happiness, like feminism, which is creating all of this depression in the West. Like the biggest study that, that was done by Blanche Flower and Oswald from 1970s to 1990s, where you have the highest levels of the depression among women, which is a study that is 100,000 people in the, from the US and, and the UK. So we believe the best optimal life is in Islam. Therefore, I will tell people about Islam. I want good for them. And I want them to follow the best uh, way of life. If you decide... But mainly ma removing misconceptions and creating harmony in society and teaching people good, to put it simply. Muhammad, if you decide that you didn't want to be a Muslim anymore, would they hurt you for not being a Muslim? If, let's say you became That's a impossible. Christian. Will you get in trouble for that becoming never a happen. Christian? Okay, first, that's impossible. That will never happen. But in the hypothetical <laughs> situation, that does not exist, right? Today, you're saying if, if I have family and I have Muslim friends and all of that, if I leave Islam, no one will do anything to me. Oh, okay. So listen, I got to put you on the hot seat. I need you to okay. answer it. Well, I want to ask you a question if that's all right. Is this interview going to be edited or is it going to be the same, <laughs> same way that it, that no, it went we don't. through? No, it's going to be what you see is what you get. Okay, I like it. No problem. Um, I appreciate it. Okay, go ahead. Um, I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. All right? Okay, I'll try my best, yes. The hot seat. What is a man? A man is someone who has like physical body parts and created by Allah with those physical body parts. That's it, a human being. Is man. America the best country on this side of heaven? Absolutely not. Look at the depression rate and suicide rates and, and like abuse and pedophilia and all of that. What is your favorite sport? Uh... I don't know if you consider chess a sport, but I like chess. Uh, true of, <coughs> excuse me, true or false, abortion is worse than slavery. Uh, yes, because it's a killing of a soul, while slavery is not killing the individual. So yes, in, in an Islamic perspective, yes, abortion is worse, killing a human being. Obviously, sorry, just to add a caveat, it has to be passed where the soul is breathed into the body, which most scholars believe after 120 days or after 40 days, according to some schools of thought. So after the soul is breathed in, it's a killing of a human being. Therefore, it's worse than slavery. Yes. Do you from an Islamic perspective, from a same level. Yes. Do you support the right to bear arms? Uh, that's a political thing. I, I, honestly, I've not lived in a country where this is the case, so I do not know. I need to live in a country and see the effects of it. So do you support the right to carry guns? Yeah, people can carry guns as long as they're not hurting other people with it or not abusing uh, the use of those guns. Is the earth flat or round? Uh, the earth is round. Should drag, queens be, should drag queens be allowed to read books to children? No, no, <laughs> no. Does a chicken have lips? Chicken have, <laughs> the chicken has lips? <laughs> lips? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's say, let's just say yes, okay. Is, yeah. it ever, is it ever okay to call a woman fat? Yeah, if she's fat, she's fat. True or false, every time a man listens to a woman, he suffers? Not necessarily. Do you support the great white hope? I don't know what that is. You don't know who the great white hope is? No. How can you know the Quran and not know who the great white hope is? 
That's not part of Islam, so you have to tell me what that is. <laughs> Donald Trump. Oh, do I support Donald Trump? No, I don't support Donald Trump. But I think he's better than Biden, I think. From certain aspects, he is. Did you have fun? Yeah, of course. Why not? <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I, I, if, I honestly, yeah, I noticed like you are trying to get, a, which, I, which is a very smart thing, and I do appreciate it. You, you are trying to kind of get the most controversial questions in order for this interview to kind of reach the most amount of people as possible, right? And I can see that you might be saying things, but you don't fully mean them when you smile and, and you laugh, right? But I do appreciate, I did enjoy it because I think it's very beneficial. I think a lot of people will benefit. A lot of people will get a lot of questions answered. And I would advise anyone to pick up a copy of the Quran and actually read the life of the Prophet ﷺ to know that Islam is just simple religion about worshiping one creator is worthy of worship. And he sent prophets and messengers with guidance She's the Quran, and he sent Jesus, and he sent prophets and messengers. And I would advise anyone to read the Quran. No, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to ask controversial questions. I wanted to ask things I wanted to know. And who was the best person to ask? It was a Muslim, right? So I wasn't trying yeah, no to problem, ask. Yeah. I wasn't trying to ask controversial questions. How can people find your your website, your YouTube channel, whatever you want to put out? Uh, if the name if the name is on the video, is there right? The Muslim Lantern there. You can just find me on YouTube, The Muslim Lantern, or at Chainless Slave on Twitter and Instagram if you uh, search for me. Chainless underscore slave. So that's it. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> You're welcome to find me. Thank you so much, man, for coming on. Remember, folks, you can support The Father State at uh, thefatherstate.tv slash donate and also on locals.com. Click the link in the description to support our work. Like, follow, subscribe. Y'all know what to do. And thank you all for tuning in. And thank you again, Muhammad, for coming on. My pleasure. All My right, pleasure. Buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome.